Hello and welcome to Comic Storian, your number one place for dramatic readings of your favorite comic books. Many of you are probably asking yourself, who is this guy and where is Benny? Well, I'm Dan and I've been doing the audio recordings for our recent Avatar series, but I am here today to bring to the channel a remastered version of the story House of M, as well as all the tie-ins in upcoming videos. I'll be doing this so that you guys get X-Men content every single week, and so that Benny doesn't overwork himself and uh, we end up having to skip a week. So today, I'll be telling you the story of House of M, written by Brian Michael Bendis. So let's not wait any longer and jump on in. Through the struggles and pains, Wanda Maximoff can be heard crying. Doctor Strange tells her, just a bit more. There! Congratulations on the birth of your healthy, happy, and beautiful twins. Wanda holds her newborns, asking her husband Vision if he can believe it. Twins! But as the new parents enjoy the sight of the life that they have brought into the world, Wanda hears the voice of Charles Xavier telling her to put it back. They've talked about this. Put it back. She has no children. There is no one here but the two of them. Wanda motions, holding up her children, saying, No! Can't you see her beautiful babies? Xavier coldly tells her that she cannot have children. She never could. Now stop abusing your mutant powers and put it back. Vision gets up, saying that he will not speak to his wife. But Xavier shouts, telling her to put the world back now. Wanda cries out that she can't, she won't. But as Xavier struggles to remain in control, the world suddenly shatters. Wanda falls out of her bed, yelling, Oh God, I, I killed them. I killed the Avengers and I killed my husband. A short while later, as Xavier looks out over the ruins of Genosha, Magneto walks out asking, How did it go? I heard the screaming. Xavier takes a cloth to wipe the blood from his nose, and Magneto says he's sorry. Xavier tells him that every time his daughter uses her powers to alter reality, she loses more of her grasp on reality, and it's not getting better. We cannot keep drugging her and psychically putting her to sleep. It's inhumane. And stop blaming yourself for this. She's a grown woman. Magneto says to stop reading his mind, but Xavier tells him that he wasn't. Magneto sighs, saying he can't help it. He put his children through hell because of what he believed in. He destroyed whatever hope they had at a decent life because of his war against the humans. And the truth is, he waged war against the humans and lost. So now he's lost the war and his children. Magneto then begins to levitate and walk out above the city, saying that he never imagined it would end up like this, and that the sacrifice would be for nothing. There are plenty of people who probably think I deserve this. And Xavier tells him, maybe, but she doesn't. The next day in New York, many of the Avengers, new and old, along with the members of the X-Men, meet, even though relationships between the two have been on shaky ground. Sitting on the side of the Avengers, Xavier welcomes the X-Men, saying that he hated how things ended between them. Cyclops tells him that he made it pretty clear that he wasn't going to involve himself with them, and he wasn't exactly nice about it. Xavier says that there is something more important that they must discuss, as a whole. One that everyone must be a part of. They must decide the fate of Wanda Maximoff. But while the Avengers and the X-Men meet, there is one person who's not there. Wanda's brother, Quicksilver. As he sits beside his sister's bed, Magneto asks, what is he doing here? Quicksilver gets up shouting that they are going to kill her. Xavier, the rest, all the Avengers, all the X-Men, they are meeting right now. They are all agreeing to kill her. Why else would they meet? They are going to decide that there is no other way, and they are going to come here and kill her. Magneto pauses for a moment and says, Pietro, they may be right. 
Quicksilver begins to vibrate, and Magneto tells him that no one can hear him scream when he yells that fast. But what would you have me do? Quicksilver says again that they are going to kill her, but Magneto grabs him, asking, what would he have him do? As Quicksilver falls to his knees crying, Magneto looks at his sleeping daughter, trying to keep himself from crying. Back in New York, Emma Frost asks, what is there to say? They need to put her down. Cap says that he won't even entertain the thought, and Wolverine kicks his feet up and takes a bite of his pizza, asking, even though they just spent the last 20 minutes explaining that the girl's out to lunch and that the world is in every kind of danger because of her? But then a shadow looms over Wolverine as Cap stands up, saying that there is always a way. Always. Emma asks Xavier, is there anything that they can do? Be honest, he is the most powerful psychic mind on the planet. Xavier says that if there was, they wouldn't be having this conversation. Emma then looks at Doctor Strange, asking is there anything the mystic arts can do? And Strange tells her that he doesn't know. He has tried everything at the present moment, but he is still researching the matter. Spider-Man asks, so if my powers start wigging out, I can count on you all just killing me? Wolverine tells him, yeah, and he'd expect them all to do the same. Xavier then says the truth of the matter is, he doesn't know what to do. Spider-Man sighs, saying, he isn't going to be home for dinner, is he? A short while later, over Genosha, Kitty looks out the window of the Quinjet, saying she really hates this place. And Wolverine tells her, it ain't no Paradise Island. But as everyone lands and enters Wanda's room, they find that she is missing. Everyone begins to ask where she could have gone, but Emma says that she found them. The teams rush over to where Emma sensed Wanda and Magneto, but as they step into the dark building, everyone's vision begins to fade as a bright light begins to shine. The next morning, Peter Parker wakes up to the cries of a baby and his wife Gwen telling him, it's his turn. Peter forces himself up asking, is it really? Okay. But it's not only for him that things are a bit different. Cap lived his life until he was old, Cyclops and Emma are married, and Simon Williams became famous. Everyone's lives seemingly changed, untethered to what reality once was. Sam Wilson became a detective, and Doctor Strange was a psychologist. Even Wolverine's life changed, but something was different for him. As he is woken up, a redhead crawls into bed telling him, Good morning. And as quickly as he can pop his claws, Wolverine jumps on the woman asking, where the hell is this? What is this? Mystique pushes Wolverine off and coughs, saying he didn't mind last night. It's his redhead fetish. What the hell is wrong with you? Wolverine runs out of the room and a uniform dressed Jessica Drew and Toad ask, is everything all right? Wolverine looks around and sees an opening and charges through the doorway. But what he sees is that he is high in the sky on a shield helicarrier, but not with shield's emblem. Instead, there's an M. Suddenly, memories begin to flood into Wolverine's head. Back in the forest, when he fought alongside Cap, Phoenix, Japan, and Xavier? Xavier said that they need to decide the fate of Scarlet Witch. He just needs to get in touch with Xavier. Xavier will put everything back. Mystique walks out asking what's wrong? And Wolverine says he remembers everything, his entire life. What did they do yesterday? Mystique says their mission was successful. Is this about the casualties? That's not like him. But don't worry, they were just some human grunts. Wolverine then asks what happened in Genosha, and Mystique says she isn't sure. She hasn't seen the paper yet. What happened? Is Lord Magnus okay? Hearing Magneto's name shoots through Wolverine like a bolt of lightning. Mystique says maybe they need to go see Madame Webb. Set him right. He wouldn't be the first S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who needed some adjustment. Huh? Nothing to be ashamed of. Wolverine looks at Mystique for a moment, then jumps over the rails. And as he crashes down onto a building, he begins to see all the posts and billboards, all showing 
mutants? Wolverine quickly gets down to ground level and picks up a magazine with a picture of Magneto on it, with the heading, The House of Magnus's Big Day. Children of the Atom and world leaders gather to pay tribute. The magazine is nothing more than a tabloid, but it's all about mutants? But people didn't like mutants. As a motorcyclist pulls up and checks his phone, Wolverine tells the man that he's going to need that bike. The man asks, what? He can go straight to, but before he could finish, Wolverine punches him in the face and takes the bike anyway. Later that night, Wolverine heads to Westchester County to find Xavier, but the mansion he once called home has a different scent. Wolverine sneaks through the darkened home and grabs a sleeping man by the face asking, where's Charles Xavier? The man asks, who? And Wolverine tightens his grip, telling him not to play games. Where is Charles Xavier? The man says he doesn't know who that is. I think you got the wrong house. So Wolverine leaves and stops at a nearby bar and calls information from a payphone. He asks the operator for a listing of Charles Xavier. And the operator asks, what city? Wolverine thinks for a moment and says, New York? And the operator tells him that there is no one listed by that name. Wolverine then asks, what about a Peter Parker? But before the operator could respond, Wolverine overhears a group of mutants giving a human woman some trouble. One of the shady mutants breathes fire while another says to torch the clothes so they can have a show. Wolverine drops the phone and begins to walk towards the mutants, popping his claws. The next morning, Wolverine heads to New York, but everything is so different. There are mutants all over the place. Wolverine stops at what would have been Tony Stark's Avengers Tower, but when he walks inside, it's just filled with businessmen. As Wolverine walks up to reception, Jessica whispers that the bosses want him brought back in, and they said any which way. Wolverine looks back to see the rest of his team, with the addition of Nightcrawler and Rogue. Mystique reports back to Command, saying, This is Red Guard Agent Darkholm. We have him. Wolverine stares for a moment, and Mystique aims her gun, saying, He's definitely popped a stitch. They are taking him back to Command. Don't get rough in front of the civilians. Wolverine asks, How did they find him? And Jessica says, With the tracker inside him. He knows that. Maybe he did pop a stitch. Wolverine scoffs, saying, Maybe he did, and then elbows Jessica in the face, taking off. Everyone opens fire as Wolverine runs outside to his bike and speeds away. But the familiar BAMF can be heard getting closer and closer. Nightcrawler makes his move, but is suddenly pelted with arrows and skids across the road. Wolverine speeds up, but then sees Cloak standing in his way and rides straight into the darkness. A few seconds later, Wolverine pops out in a dark tunnel and quickly jumps to his feet ready for a fight. Luke Cage tells him, calm down, mutant. Wolverine says, Cage? And Luke asks, do they know each other? Wolverine then asks, what the hell is going on? And Luke tells him that he'd love to talk, but they gotta trash that tracker first. Another voice tells him, he heard the man, do it. And as Wolverine looks back, he sees Hawkeye with his bow drawn. Luke then says, wait a second, this guy is acting like we know each other. Why is that? Wolverine tells Luke that he is going to need him to calm everyone down and... Hawkeye interrupts him saying, fine, and releases the arrow. The arrow shoots into Wolverine's neck, piercing the tracking device and hitting the wall. And as it does, Wolverine falls to the ground. Luke yells asking, why did you do that? And Hawkeye says that he's done taking chances with mutants. The two begin arguing, but after a few moments, Wolverine starts to get back up and Felicia Hardy says, they may want to turn their attention to the dead guy, because he's not really dead anymore. Wolverine gets up asking, how long was I out for? And Misty says, about 30 seconds? Why? Wolverine then sighs saying, then it's already too late. They really should have yanked the tracker out before bringing him here. 
Misty asks, what is he talking about? But just then, the tunnel walls burst open and the sentinels reach in, saying, Sapien targets locked. Then all of a sudden, their eyes begin to glow and beams start firing all throughout the tunnel. A few seconds later, Cloak appears in an office as several people tumble out. Everyone asks, where is this place? And Cloak says that it's the only place he could think of, Kingpin's office. He isn't really using it since he's in a coma. But everyone looks back out the window, seeing that not all of their group made it. And Luke slams his fists on the desk, asking Wolverine that he better have been worth it. Wolverine asks, what does he think is going on here? And Luke asks, what does he think is going on? Wolverine says he knows exactly what's going on, but they aren't going to believe him. Do they know each other? Luke tells him no. And Wolverine asks, then why did they pick him up? Luke goes on saying that they had some inside sources on the helicarrier. Word got out that he went AWOL. The Red Guard's star agent Wolverine jumped ship. Thought it was interesting timing considering what I've been told. Thought it was worth having a talk. Wolverine asks, does he remember that they are both Avengers? And Luke asks, what's an Avenger? Wolverine sighs saying, He's going to explain things, but they probably aren't going to believe it. Up until two days ago, he was one of the X-Men, and also a member of the new Avengers. Which means nothing to them, since they don't remember that there were old Avengers. In the world where he came from, mutants were the minority, and the X-Men worked to build a peaceful coexistence between the growing mutant population and the regular people. It wasn't the best life, but he made the most of it. He'd been mind wiped so many times that he doesn't even remember where he came from or even how old he is. One of the X-Men's biggest problems in the world was Eric Magnus, or Magneto. Anyway, he had a couple of kids, Wanda. Hawkeye stops him there saying, they know all these things. She's the human one. Wolverine pauses and asks, what? Hawkeye tells him that Magnus had three kids, Pietro, Lorna, and Wanda. Wanda is the human one. Wolverine scoffs, yeah, well, the day before yesterday, Wanda Maximoff was a mutant, called herself the Scarlet Witch. Ends up, she has more voodoo power than most anyone ever, more than she could control. Turns out she lost control of her mind not too long ago, and she killed a lot of good people. She was an Avenger, and, well, she was the reason the old Avengers stopped being Avengers. She went nuts and attacked her own team, killed half of them. And two days ago, the X-Men and the Avengers got together to try and figure out what to do with her. They went to Genosha where Magneto was keeping her, and when they did, the world went white, and he woke up to this. Now the world has no X-Men. There ain't no Avengers, and it's all run by mutants. A damn mutant utopia. Hawkeye walks up asking, what about him? What was he like before the world went white? Wolverine stares for a moment and then says he died. Clint Barton was killed by the witch. Wolverine then looks at Luke asking, does he believe him? And Luke says, yeah. Not expecting that answer, Wolverine asks, why? and Luke motions to the little girl in the corner, saying, her. That girl walked up to me out of the blue and said exactly what you just said. X-Men, Avengers, Hawkeye died. She didn't know how it happened, but she knew it happened. In detail, every single thing. Wolverine looks at the young girl and kneels down asking what is her name? And the young girl says, Layla. Wolverine takes her hand, asking her if she can hear what he's thinking. And she says, what? No. She just woke up the other day and everything was all, whatever this is. Is she crazy? Felicia asks, why would that girl of all people remember the world? Wolverine gets up saying that he's been mind wiped so many times, he can't remember anything before a certain time. Up to and including today. All he ever wanted was... Wolverine pauses for a moment and looks at Layla again saying, It's all I ever wanted. Wolverine turns to everyone saying, 
Magneto got his daughter to give them all what they always wanted, so that he could have what he always wanted. And if there's one person who can help them… A few minutes later, in the Summer's residence, Cloak teleports everyone in, just as Emma Frost unlocks the door and walks inside. Emma stares at everyone, asking, Is this a robbery? Actually, don't even answer. Yeah, don't even worry about not being able to answer, because that's me telling your brain what to do, and I don't want to hear from you. Do you even know what they do to humans that- Wait, what? What the hell was that? What did you just think? How do you know me? Wolverine tells her that she's in his brain. Take a look. Emma glances over at Layla, asking, What the hell is this? Layla says she didn't say anything. But as Emma looks into her mind, she sees the truth of what happened to the world. And she sees something else. Somewhere dark. Charles. Emma screams as she detaches from Layla, asking Wolverine, Is he kidding her with this? House of Magnus? House of Magnus? They are going to find Magneto and oh, that is it! We are going to kill him and his kids! Wolverine opens the fridge and grabs a beer saying, he's got no problems with that, but she's going to need more than just them. And even if they do, that still doesn't mean the whole damn world ain't screwed for good. A few moments later, Emma continues to look through Layla's mind, when suddenly the sound of keys hitting the floor can be heard. Emma looks back at Cyclops saying, Hi honey. And Wolverine says, Hey bub. Cyclops asks, What the hell is going on here? And Emma tells Layla to do it the way they talked about. This is Scott Summers. Just relax and focus. As Layla and Cyclops lock eyes, he sees the world before, and Emma tells him to hold it together. Steady? Everything's okay. After vomiting, Cyclops sits back up, asking, The whole world? The whole world? How could Magneto have done this to the entire world? This! Where's the professor? Wolverine says that's just it. They haven't found him yet. He's been to the school, which ain't a school anymore. Everyone else is scattered. There is only just a few of them. Cyclops starts pulling his tie off, asking who can they find? Later in the streets of New York, Peter Parker is out with his wife, son, Aunt May, and Uncle Ben, when he suddenly sees a wall of people in front of him. Peter asks, can he help them? And Layla stares into his eyes, saying, sorry. All of Peter's memories come rushing back to him, and he stumbles back, telling them to stop. Stop it! Gwen asks if everything is okay, but when Peter looks at her, he remembers what happened to her, and the snap. Ben walks up, asking what's happening, and when Peter looks back at him, he screams. Gwen looks to Emma, asking what the hell did they just do? But Emma psychically tells her to go play in the park and have a nice day. As Peter's family leaves, Cyclops asks who wants to talk to him, and Wolverine says he'll do it. Later, up on a building alone, Peter wails and wipes the tears from his eyes, saying this is all a trick, right? It's gotta be Mysterio or some hallucination. Please, please just say he snapped. Say this is not real. He can handle that. Wolverine says, Sorry, but this didn't happen to just him. Peter picks himself up, saying he swears to God he's gonna kill him. Magneto, his stupid daughter, he is going to kill them with his bare hands. He's not... He's not gonna be able to stop himself. Wolverine tells him not to worry. He won't even get the chance. It'll already be done. Wolverine and the others begin taking Layla around, recruiting people that can help them. Kitty Pride, Stephen Strange, Carol Danvers, Tony Stark, Matt Murdock, and Jennifer Walters. But as they come to Cap, they just see Cap is an old man. As the team looks on, Cyclops asks, is that really him? And Emma says that she had to see it for herself, and he is no use to them like this. With the roster ever-growing, Emma asks everyone, 
Is there anyone who doubts that this is what happened to them? No one says anything, but Emma looks at Hawkeye, saying she can hear his thoughts loud and clear. The only way he will believe them is to let Layla do what she does and unlock his memories from his life before this one. Hawkeye yells that what he wants is for her mutant mind out of his head. But before they could go on, there's a quiet rumble, and suddenly the walls burst in. Rogue steps in, asking if they would be so kind and get their hands and claws in the air. They're all under arrest. Everyone quickly jumps in for a fight, but as Rogue grabs a hold of Layla, she absorbs part of her power. The rest of the Red Guard sees the world from before, and the fighting quickly stops. Wolverine looks at Mystique to help her up, but she slaps him. Wolverine asks, feeling better now? Mystique rubs her hand, saying that she might have broken it, and Wolverine tells her to save it for the guy who did this to them. Rogue stands up, saying she never felt anything like that before, and Emma says none of them have. Cyclops then tells everyone that they can have their nervous breakdowns later. They need to get it together. Carol asks, what's the plan now? And Wolverine says they go straight to Magneto. Garantia, he knows exactly where Xavier is. Meanwhile, over in the beautiful city of Genosha, Magneto looks out at the buildings, and Lorna tells him that their guests will be arriving soon. Victor Von Doom will be here in half an hour. Magneto tells her he'll be there. He just needs a little more time. As she leaves, Magneto looks over the plaque in the middle of the garden and walks over to it. He reads the words, Xavier Memorial Garden. He died so Genosha could live. As night fell, celebrities and people of power all visit the House of Magnus to pay tribute. King T'Challa from the African Commonwealth of Wakanda, King of Latveria, Victor Von Doom, even Janice Vell from the Cree Empire, Princess Aurora of Kenya, and King Namor of the Kingdom of Atlantis. And once the crowd quiets down, the speaker announces the honorary House of Magnus. But as everyone claps, one of the guards notice something falling from the sky. It begins to fall faster and faster until everyone can clearly see what it is. A sentinel. Magneto gets up and stops the sentinel before it can land. And then Wolverine leads the charge with all of the heavy hitters. But as the fight begins, up in the garden area, Cloak teleports Emma and Layla as they search for Xavier. Emma looks around the serene courtyard when she sees a rock with the plaque on it. As she reads the words, she falls to her knees saying, Oh my god, oh no. Layla asks, is this it? And Cloak tells them to wait. He sinks into the ground and after a few moments, he returns saying, there's nothing there. No coffin, no body, just dirt. It's not over yet. But as the fight rages on the steps of the House of Magnus, Doctor Strange notices a light coming from high up in one of the towers. Strange sends an astral projection of himself up and sees Wanda inside playing with her children. And she says he is looking rather vibrant. Strange says she was just down there. And Wanda tells him that wasn't her body. She just sent that body so she can watch the children. Something her father can show off on occasions. As Strange floats down, he asks, does she remember him? And she tells him, of course. He was there at the birth of her children. How did he find himself here? Strange tells her that she brought them here. She created Layla to bring them here. Wanda looks back saying, I don't know who that is. And Strange says, of course not. She has created so much lately. Did she create her father as well? There were rumors of his death and his somewhat puzzling rebirth before all this became what it became. Was that her as well? How long has she been playing with the world? Wanda puts one of the blocks together saying he is full of questions and she cannot fully understand them. One of the children says, playtime isn't talk time. And Strange apologizes saying, but they have little time. He is concerned for everyone's safety. Wanda asks, what does he mean? And Strange waves his hand, telling her that their friends are fighting over her, over her father, right outside. 
Soon, the bricks in the walls start to separate, and Wanda can see the war unfolding within her home. Wanda sighs, saying, No one should be fighting. The purpose of all this was that there would be no more fighting. She really doesn't understand people. Strange asks, Where is Magneto? Where is Charles Xavier? Wanda seemingly ignores the questions, saying that he wanted her to be happy. He wanted all of them to be happy. Strange asks, is that what Magneto said? And Wanda turns to him saying it's more complicated than that. They have to understand, he was trying to save her. A light begins to form and the memory of Magneto and Quicksilver begins to play. It was the same as before, but this time it showed what happened after. Wanda could hear them, the arguing and shouting between her brother and father. Wanda said that she knows her friends are coming, and she will allow what needs to be done. But is she a coward for not wanting to kill herself, even though she knows she should? Quicksilver scoffs, saying that their father chose his mutant race over his own children. They were just little kids, and he abandoned them. They were supposed to be a family. Wanda says that she would have liked that. She'd do anything to make that happen. And Quicksilver pauses for a moment and says, she could. She could make it happen. She could make everyone happy. Xavier's mind is already inside hers, right? And with her powers, she can use them. Really, there's nothing she can't do. In an instant, in an instant, not only could they have what they deserve, she could give it to their friends as well. Father could be given everything he dreamed of. They can finally be a family. They'd all be happy, and they wouldn't bother them anymore. Wanda says she can't, but Quicksilver gets up telling her that she can change things for the better, permanently, without fighting right now. Why would she have been given this power if not for this reason? It might be that this is what she's supposed to do. And if she doesn't, then they are going to kill her. Strange's eyes widen as he watches saying, it wasn't Magneto, it was Pietro. Strange then asks Emma if she's listening and she tells him to ask her where is Xavier. Strange looks back to Wanda and asks, but as he does, there's a quiet and Wanda falls to the ground with an arrow in her back. Back in the garden, Magneto appears, asking why are they doing this to his family? Who are they? Emma tells Layla to focus, and suddenly, Magneto sees the truth. But up in the tower, Hawkeye reaches for another arrow, and Wanda asks why would he do that? The arrow in her back starts to disappear, and Hawkeye asks, why? She killed him! They were friends! He loved her! He'd kill for her! Wanda says she loved him too. And Hawkeye screams, asking, why did she kill them then? Why did she do this? And Wanda tells him that she brought him back. Hawkeye readies the next arrow, saying she doesn't even know what she's done. But then one of the children yells, SHUT UP! And before Hawkeye could release the arrow, his body begins to dissolve and fade away. Strange looks back, and Wanda says that she didn't mean it. He was so mad at her. She needed to protect the children. She can't control any of it. Back outside, Quicksilver uses his speed to continuously keep everyone down. But there is a rumble, and a booming voice yells, This ends. Pieces of metal quickly begin to swirl and coil around everyone as Magneto steps through. And he looks at Quicksilver, asking, What have you done in my name, boy? Quicksilver screams, they were going to kill her! Magneto stares, saying he used him and his sister. He would have never allowed this. You've destroyed everything and everyone, and you used my name to do it! What right did you have? Using the lumps of scattered metal, Magneto slams each piece over and over into Quicksilver until there is a scream. Wanda cries out for her brother, and as Magneto calls out to her, she removes his mouth. 
Wanda floats down to the broken body of Quicksilver and holds out her hand, mending his wounds and reviving him. Everyone quietly watches, and Wanda tells Magneto that Pietro just wanted him to be happy. He treated them like babies. Why? Because he thinks he is actually better than everyone? The arrogance of him! He thinks because they're mutants that they are better than them? That we deserve to rule? That's what he was given, and look what it became! Even after getting what he wanted, he is still a horrible man. They're not the next step. They're not gods. They're freaks. Look at us, Daddy. We're freaks. Mutants. You chose this over us, and you ruined us. Daddy, Emma pauses for a moment. Oh, no. And with clarity in her mind, Wanda utters the words, No more mutants. The world turns white once again. The next morning in Avengers Tower, Peter wakes up, but this time not to his screaming baby. He looks over and MJ asks, is he okay? He should probably avoid getting hit on the head so much by big mechanical octopus arms. Peter wanders into the meeting room with a few others, and She-Hulk asks what happened. One minute they're fighting in Genosha, and next she was tucked into her bed. Luke asks Peter, is he okay? And Pete asks, does he remember? Luke tells him, yeah. MJ? And Peter says, no. She doesn't remember. Jessica Drew looks over and asks what they are talking about. Remember what? Iron Man then walks in asking who called this meeting. And Peter asks how... Wait, how are they here? They were just there and now here? Luke asks, does Iron Man not remember either? And Iron Man asks, what is he supposed to remember? Peter slams his fists on the table and screams. He lifts them up and slams them again and begins crying. Carol stands up saying everything is back to normal now, right? Everything seems okay, but then a weak voice tells them not quite. And a nearly defeated Doctor Strange walks in. Outside of Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, Emma wakes up in the courtyard to the screams of Kitty Pride. She quickly gets up and runs inside, and sees Kitty asking what happened. The students! Emma sees all of the panicked children, and Kitty repeats what Wanda said. No more mutants. She said no more mutants. Emma then tells everyone that it's, it's okay. They just need to figure out what to do. Cyclops then tells Nightcrawler that some of them still have their powers. They need to find Wolverine. If his powers were removed, then his skeleton will kill him. Nightcrawler quickly starts teleporting to all of the places where Wolverine would normally be. But when he teleports out into the field, he sees him. He reaches down, but Wolverine shoots up saying that he remembers his whole life. He remembers all of it. Back inside, Emma rushes to Cerebra to see the extent of Wanda's command. And when the projection appears before her, she sees that they're gone. All of the mutants are gone. Cyclops asks, where is Wanda Maximoff? And Emma says that she doesn't see her. She doesn't see anyone. Beast storms in behind, asking, where is Xavier? Find Xavier! But Emma begins to cry, saying, he's not. Back at the tower, Everyone watches as reports from all over the world start to confirm what everyone is thinking. Wanda removed the mutant gene from everyone across the world. Strange begins to rub his head, saying it would seem only those who were there at the event, those protected by Emma's psychic defense and his spellcasting, remember the events that transpired. Cap asks, is there any way to locate Wanda? And Strange says he's tried a few times before he came here. He cannot. He cannot find any sign of her. Iron Man asks, is he alright? And Strange stares at him, saying his duties as master of the mystic arts are simple. Protect this world from an attack just like this? He's failed. Completely. Just then, Iron Man gets an alert. Jarvis says it would seem that... And Iron Man says, yeah, yeah, he knows. Someone is at the mansion. A few moments later, at the ruins of their former home, 
The Avengers step inside, and She-Hulk asks, what is this? On the wall before them is the pinned up costume of Hawkeye, with an article reading, Avenger Hawkeye dead. Mystery surrounds the fallen hero's fate. Cap smiles, and Carol asks, what does this mean? But over in Genosha, Magneto shuffles through the city when he kicks up a metal fork. He looks down at it and holds his arm out, but nothing happens. Just then, a voice calls out asking, where is she? Magneto falls to his knees, and Cyclops fires an optic blast before him, asking, Where is she? Wolverine then jumps and slams Magneto's head into the ground, all while he says, I don't know. Wolverine pops his claws and holds them to Magneto's neck, saying, He lost his power over metal, huh? Everyone begins asking questions. Where is Charles? Where's Quicksilver? Where's Wanda? And to each of them, Magneto says, I don't know. Emma reads his mind and says, he's telling the truth. Wolverine leans in saying, they're just about out of reasons to keep him on this planet then. But before Wolverine could do anything, Rogue says this isn't his fault. Wolverine pulls his claws back saying, yeah, and the way I see it, Magneto deserves every second of the rest of his crap, sapien life. And when we find your kids, and we will, we'll be sure to say hi for you. Meanwhile, in another part of the world, Wanda walks through a bazaar, smiling and saying hello to everyone she comes across. But if she's alive, is she no longer a mutant? Can she not control reality? And what of Xavier? These questions remain unknown. And that, my friends, is the conclusion to the story, House of M. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, please be sure to give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit that bell icon to get notifications when we go live with more videos, because we will be covering the House of M tie-ins. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash comicstorian. Or you can go over to our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash comicstorian, where we stream our podcast Comics Experiment every Thursday, as well as our superhero D&D, &D, at roughly 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time, right here.